Julie tells it like it is. Um, and uh, sometimes it's a, it's a bruising uh, experience to, to hear it from Julie. Uh, I mean, we're friends and, you know, I'll send her something and I'll, I, I hope she likes it, not because I need her praise, but because I hope it's good. And if it's crap, she's like, Michael, you have a lot more work to do. And she's strived for excellence her whole life. She doesn't know how to settle. She doesn't know how to mail it in. And she strives for greatness with everything that she does. And that almost in itself sounds it sounds like almost a funny thing to say, but I just mean the desire to make something as good as it can be drives everything that Julie does. I think it's true of all the design professions and we, we have heroes of materiality in, in, in each of the design professions, but Julie, uh, you know, Julie gets it. Um, and it's partly her fine arts training as a sculptor, um, uh, and then becoming studying landscape architecture after that as a as a young artist she was infatuated with materials and uh influenced by Eva Hess and others for whom uh those uh characteristics are well known I want to say personally I think the most important influence of Julie Bargman on our time is the unique ability that she has to make relevant work that also has an artistic signature. Um, very few people can do that. Very few people can do it positively. When I think of Julie's work, uh, the, the three projects immediately come to mind. Um, uh, the project in Detroit, which is the most recent, uh, the waterworks project that she created for Dee Dee and Rusty Rose in, in Dallas and the Urban Outfitters uh, corporate headquarters in Philadelphia. And, you know, there it's an interesting three projects because there's a lot of range in the work there. Um, but as I have said of Julie before, there's a signature to that work. There's a kind of there's, there's a drawing of a line between uh, a, 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 a kind of unabandoned uh, love of materials and yet a spareness of deploying them. Uh, so for me, the public will learn about Julie's work that there's a, there's, there's a playfulness about it, um, but there's also a seriousness about it with respect to environmental health and wellness and and the industrial world that's around us and why why it has a, 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 a I think Julie refers to it as a sublime beauty. Uh, and she sees that and draws that into the work. Um, I think people see in Julie's work that uh, you can be invigorated and excited and feel alive in landscapes that aren't Hallmark cards. Um, she does not make, uh, her landscapes aren't, um, she, I don't know if she still uses it, but she used to call them um, uh, Holly, uh, Holly Hobbit uh, landscapes. Can, if you know Julie, it's just said with <laughs> great humor, but you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, um, I think you walk into a Bargman landscape and you go, wow, this does not feel really like something that I've exactly seen before. She's not about making people comfortable because of familiarity or tugging at heartstrings. She, she makes you feel alive with her work through other portals of the visual world. It's very, very important message or or even not so much a message but just a thing for young landscape architects to see that that there can be new landscapes that aren't like things that have been made before and that belong to their time and uh and uh make us better as people uh through the experiences that they create for us um i love that about julie